Our text is taken from Psalm 23, verse 5. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. The 23rd Psalm and Monday Thursday seems to not be connected with each other until you look closely at the fusion of the Old and the New Testaments. Monday Thursday, my theme then is, requires a radical mindset change. Monday Thursday requires a radical mindset change. See, the better we understand God's Word, the more comfort we find in it. The darkness of trouble arises from the darkness of our ignorance. What we don't know, we can't believe. The word Monday Thursday is derived from the Latin word for mandatum, duty, obligation, command. It's not a suggestion, it's a command. It's an instruction that you have to obey, you don't have a choice. Monday Thursday refers to the command Jesus gave to the disciples at the Last Supper, that they should love and serve one another. Because John reminds us, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if you have love one for another. Monday, Thursday, I used to think, is a day of mourning for the suffering of Christ. Monday, Thursday has nothing to do with mourning. Absolutely nothing. I don't see anyone in the New Testament mourning on Monday, Thursday. I do not see that. Monday, Thursday is a day of commitment, commission, and consistent continuation. Today is observed as Monday, Thursday. The only thing that we see in the Bible on Monday, Thursday is anger, judgment, prejudice, an ideology seeking the death of a Savior and salvation. The only tears that were shed on Monday, Thursday was the blood that flowed from the body of the Christ. You know, Monday, Thursday is a funny day because on that day, according to Luke 23, 12, Two enemies became friends in order to slaughter the Christ. Herod and Pilate wanted nothing to do with each other, but they had to collude to find a just man and an unjust trial guilty of something he had not committed. But here's the radical idea that I submit to you tonight. Monday Thursday is a litmus test for Good Friday and Easter. Because in Monday, Thursday, we see a symbolic act of the washing of the feet of the disciples. And it is like Jesus is saying, you love and admire me, and you want to show compassion by washing my feet. But are you willing and humble enough to wash the feet of each other? See, we are elitist, privileged, entitled sinners who want to worship Jesus our way without loving our neighbor as he commanded us to do. We want to worship Jesus, but we will not talk to our sister for 10 years because of something that had gone wrong some time ago or the fight that we picked with a brother or with a family member. The cross, the table, so strange, so unexpected, prepared in the presence of enemies, thirsting for my soul. That is the scene from the New Testament. So let me go back to our text in uh, Psalm 23, 5, and ask you an injunction, a question. What is your intention with Jesus? You know what has happened on Monday, Thursday. It would seem to be a fact that our enjoyment of everything is in direct proportion to the interest we bestow upon it. A lot of us have become lukewarm in our faith because we don't practice it. A lot of us have become cold in our love for Christ because we not devote ourselves to Christ. We have no joy in it because we have lost our joy in the, Lord, in the Lord that we were supposed to have. Even the games that we play, if we don't play it, becomes boring. 
if we are so happy in the Lord, why are we often so angry at life and life challenges and life's injustices? Being saved by Jesus comes with the command to love others, even those who are not like us, even the wretched, the poor, the despised, the indifferent. Now here's the radical idea. The Old Testament is the book of promise. The New Testament is the book of fulfillment. You see, Christianity is not an anemic religion. You do not have to hemorrhage to find support and resources and sustenance. Psalm 23 says to you, before the cross, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. It incorporates the theme of supply, defense, assurance, and care from God. The psalm uses the metaphor of a shepherd's care for his sheep to describe the wisdom, strength, and kindness of God. A gracious host would anoint his guests by applying a soothing oil to the guest's head. Remember how travel was, and that was by foot, and it was dusty, and there were sandstorms, and there were all those kind of things. So the first thing you do, you soothe your guests by putting oil on his head. And so the oil is put on his head, but with sheep, it's put on their wounds from being exposed to the elements outside. The Lord provides for us generously more than the heart can ever desire. So here we have a cross and a table that invites us to feast with sustenance for the natural body. That's what Psalm 23 says. But this table, the cross, is providential love, preordained. The cross is the altar of the new dispensation. The cross is a sublime and profound integration of being and doing. It is transformational. It is Monday, Thursday that we know who He is and what He will do. Good Friday we see how it is done. And on Easter we say, He is risen. He is risen indeed. It is done, right? So, so we don't have a religion and a faith of an interventionist. We have a faith of an activist. Something has already happened. We must just claim it and apply it to ourselves. The cross is the ultimate revelation of agape love. And what makes it so interesting? That this pure, willful, sacrificial love that intentionally desires our good this love was planned and prepared for us because the ultimate joy that you and I can have is to have peace with God. That is what Monday, Thursday is about. If you are willing to humble yourself and to serve each other without prejudice, you will find sustenance for the joy and the peace and the love in your own heart. And as we look towards Good Friday... Let me remind you of the words of a chaplain in the army when he says, when Jesus came to our Savior, Lutheran, they simply passed him by. They never hurt the hair of him, they only let him die. For men had grown more tender and they would not give him pain. They only just passed down the street and left him in the rain. Still Jesus cried, forgive them for they know not what they do. And still it rained the wintry rain that drenched him through and through. The crowds went home and left the streets without a soul to see. And Jesus crouched against the wall and cried for Calvary. Are you one of them that turns your back on the Christ? Are you one of them that's not true to the commission? Because that is a simple instruction. Love one another, go forth and make disciples of the world. That is our ultimate message. God bless you.